So this is a quick follow-up video to my last video on FCF. I just wanted to give some examples of how I use FCF daily and also mention some things that I forgot to mention in the last video. One thing I forgot to mention in the last video, and it's something I don't use often myself, but you can actually use your cursor and your mouse to choose things from the FCF list. In the last video, I did mention how you can run FCF on your phone very easily, but this is a case where the clicking with the mouse comes in handy because you can use your touch screen to select things from the list. I set up a function on my computer to where I can just press O and hit enter and it lists all the files in my current directory and subdirectory. And now I can quickly type what I'm looking for, like if I'm looking for a picture of ice cream, and I can hit enter and it opens up the picture or file that I selected. And of course this works with all file types, not just images. Another example, I type O, hit enter, start typing what I'm looking for, an MP4 file, choose the MP4 file I want from the list, and that file is open for me. More specifically, I have a whole directory full of books in PDF format. All I have to do is type books on my computer, hit enter, it automatically moves into my book directory and starts listing all the files in my book directory and its subdirectories. Again, I can start typing what I'm looking for, green, I found green eggs and ham, hit enter, and I can start reading green eggs and ham. I also have it set up that if I type in something like Seuss, of course it lists all the Dr. Seuss books, but if I just pick a directory rather than a PDF, it moves my shell into that directory. Another case where I use FCF regularly is I have aliased a script called Jen, which is my wife's name. When I press enter, it gives me a list of options. Do I want to SSH into her computer? Do I want to transfer files with SFTP? Do I want to go to the directory on my computer that synchronizes her photos? So I can hit enter and then it brings up my prompt for SSH. Here's the same example with my daughter, Ember. I type in her name, I can SSH into her tablet, into her computer, I can transfer files with SFTP, I can go to her current directory on my computer that synchronizes with her devices, or I can just quit out. How about this? I type Android, my phone is hooked up through USB right now. When I do that, my first option is shell. I can hit shell and it brings me into an ADB shell. If I was to run the Android command again, I can search packages and automatically uses ADB to list all packages and I can type in something like Termux and it'll bring up my Termux information and cat that back out to me. Run Android again, I can also run upgrade packages which actually checks the F-Droid website for any updates to any of my packages. We'll download them and push them over and install them through ADB. I can go to kill to kill ADB because sometimes it screws up and you need to kill it to get it working again. Or I can use the screen option which opens up my phone's screen on my desktop so I can use it without actually having to touch the phone. Another option I have on here is to back up a package. And the thing is when you choose to back up a package through ADB, it asks for a confirmation on the screen of the phone. So what this script does is it uses ADB, it will give me a list of packages, I can select the package, it will start to back it up, and it will open up the screen on my desktop so I can confirm the transfer. So back up, I'll type in Termux, I will choose which Termux application, whether I want Termux or Termux Tasker or widget, uh, <laughs> widget or API or whatever application I want. When I hit enter, it's going to then bring up my phone screen on my desktop at which point I can confirm that I want to back up. I do not want to back up right now. I also have NS alias. NS for net scan. When I hit enter, it's actually going to start an nmap scan that I have preset and pipe that into FZF. At this point, it's going to list all the devices on my network which have port 80 open. I can then choose one of those and it will use OctaCut it and then open up that computer or device in my web browser. Not only is this extremely convenient on my desktop computer, but especially on my phone because I can set an icon that I click that automatically does some preset net scans of networks. So I can walk in some place, get on the Wi-Fi, click that icon, and it can open up a list like that that I can just choose what I want to happen next with very little typing because typing stuff on your phone in a shell is not fun. But if you script things out, and especially using something like FCS, it makes things a lot easier. Let's look at some other examples on my phone. First, let me record a very short video of myself. Now I can go to my home screen and I can click one of these two options here. I'll click this one. It brings up a list of my most recent videos. I'll choose the latest one. And it's going to run that through a script and create an animated GIF or GIF, whatever you want to call it. Now let's take a few still images.
Now I'm going to choose another item from my script list, which gives me a list of my most recent photos. I will choose just the last couple, tab, 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 just like I would on a desktop to choose multiple files in FCF. Hit enter, and a few seconds later, I have an animated GIF from those still images. I also have this script called Link Menu, and when I choose it, it opens up a shell with a list of links to web applications I've created. I can use my arrow keys to search through. Oops, let's get that in frame. And when I choose one, I hit enter, and it opens it up in my web browser. I also have a script I created called My Music, which I've also aliased to MM. When I hit enter, it will bring up a list. This is a list of songs I have on a YouTube playlist. So any songs I want, any music I want, I can add to that YouTube playlist. This script will pull them down, create a playlist like this. I can search through things, so I can type something like Beck, and it'll bring up songs with the word Beck in it. I can hit tab to select multiple ones. And then I can hit enter, and it'll play them through MPV. I also have the default option on here, play last song replay. And what that does is when I do pick songs and play them, it actually creates a playlist in my home directory. Then, next time I open up this script, if I want, I can choose that and we'll play the songs that I played last time. It shuffles them up and plays them through MPV. So it's using MPV to stream just the audio from a YouTube playlist that I've created, shuffles them up, and I also have it set up that MPV will recognize my media keys so I can go forward and back and pause the songs. Here's a practical use that could be used in a business scenario. Currently at work because of all that's going on in the world, we have to take our temperatures daily and then fill out a form with our name, whether we have a cough, a sore throat, difficulty breathing, and then write down our temperature. Currently where I work, we're writing these down on pieces of paper. You can barely read what people are writing. Who knows if they're getting submitted the right way because once they're filled out, they're gonna be scanned. People are actually filling them out different ways, writing their names differently. They're circling things instead of checking things. It's all being done differently. Well, if you write out a script and you limit what the user can input using something like FCF, you can get a very efficient, quick, and easy to use application. Here is the code I wrote. I'll try to remember to put a link to this in the description. It's only 20 lines of code, and it actually could be shortened even more. Let's see how it works. Again, we want to keep it easy to use. When you run the code, it's going to pull a list of employees from a server, and then it's going to give you those as options. You can type in either the employee name or the employee number, but when it submits it to the server, it's going to submit just the employee number because that's all the server needs. It will cross-reference it for a user's name if you need it later on. We also are going to use a preset range of numbers for the temperature so they can't type something outside of that range. Let's go ahead and run it. Here's a list of names. Again, if I know someone's employee number, like uh, 47, I can type that. It'll bring up that user's in, uh, name and number, or I can just type in their name. So for example, I can type in Bob, and there's Bob Jones. I can hit enter. Now I can type in their temperature, 96.6. Hit enter. Now, do they have a cough? No. Do they have a sore throat? No. Are they having difficulty breathing? No. Submit that information to the server, displays the output, and now it brings you back. Do you want to X out or enter another user? Because you might be entering more than one person. You want, don't have to run the script each time. Let's enter another user. Again, I can type in Tim. I can choose Tim or Timmy. Let's go with Tim. We'll choose him, and I'll go 98.5 for him. Does he have a cough? No, no, no. It gives me the output from the server. Once it's submitted, let's enter another employee. Again, I can just go up and choose a name. I can say uh, 98.4 for him. Again, I'm limited to the list. I can hit enter. Uh, do they have a cough? No. Do they have a sore throat? No. Are they having difficulty breathing? Yes. And it submits it right away. Now that information is formatted properly. It's in a log or a database on the server. It can be accessed and you can also set up alerts. If someone says yes to one of those things, it can automatically notify who needs to be notified rather than filling out paperwork and they're going, oh, what's the procedure? Let's look up the procedure now. Submit it. It's quick. It's easy. It's code you can write in a couple of minutes and it's easy for anybody to use. It will run on any device. So again, I just wanted to give more examples of how I use use FCF daily. It is such a great program that has changed the way I script things out. It makes things super easy, both on a mobile device and desktop and anywhere because it runs on all major operating systems and platforms. So I really recommend again checking it out. I hope that this video has also inspired you to look into it more. Thank you for watching and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K, a link in the description, and I hope that you have a great day.